begin the second quarter. Dante Hardy's bat. Jamie Gillen, the lefty, will get it away and get away. Beautiful kick. Long one, too. 61 yards. Took it back to the 31. The retreating Hardy is snowed under there. So excellent spell. Number, number 17. Well, that's what happens. You get used to some of those short, quick throws, and then all of a sudden, Josh scrambles around and throws it 60 yards downfield, and your guys aren't ready. 31 get this one out quick, and it is Diggs again. Karen Kay is there for the tackle. Limited though it. They've lived it and experienced the uh, hot shots of Allen on a regular basis. The 32, free runner is McFadden. Allen throws incomplete. The Giants defense throwing some different things at Allen here in the first 16 minutes of this one. They really are because you're seeing the pressure come down inside and then McFadden able to loop out and around as they bring the pressure down inside to draw the blocker on the outside to him. So, so far, let's give a little credit over there to Wink Martindale. This plan is working, and it's a second straight week now for the Bills getting off to a slow start. You're right. Over in London against Jacksonville, first four drives, four punts, only a couple of first downs. And Biggs. Full start. Offense, number 14. Five-yard penalty, third down. I think he wanted to get downfield because of that big arm of Allen. I think, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you get your number called in the huddle and you got a deep ball, the last thing you're yeah. thinking about is, was it on one or two <laughs> or three? Did that ever happen to you? Oh, man, I jumped offside so many times. That was pathetic. <laughs> you know, the worst part is sometimes when you were at home and you could actually hear the snap count, you get so used to not being able to hear it. And this crowd knows what they're doing. Third and 14, Allen escaping to his right. And he's gonna throw deep for Diggs, who tried to break free, comes back for it, and it's incomplete. He was fighting for space with Deontay Banks, and they're so good in those scramble situations. But again, the Giants defense able to get Buffalo off the field quickly. Sexy Dex, he got a little uh, pressure <laughs> up there. And then let's talk about Banks on the back end. Watch what he does with this double move down the field. This is what's so tough, the scramble drill against Josh Allen. You see Diggs open. Now watch Banks not foul him. That is almost every yeah. rookie out there would have fouled in that situation. Very savvy play. Called Sam Martin's name a lot here tonight. Flag is down. Eric Gray from the 25. Bring it back to the 37 yard line. The flag coming that quickly. Usually that's a grab of the gunner. As those guys work so hard to get downfield. A lot of flags here in the During first the kick. quarter plus. Holding. Receiving team, number 30. 10 yard penalty, first down. Timeout. One of the best fan bases in the league. They've been quiet though so far. Their offense has done nothing in the first four drives. Giants lead 3 0. Taylor, quick look. Everything was covered. He scrambles. Fires downfield. And did he keep the feet in bounds? Jalen Hyatt on the sideline. They say yes. <laughs> wow. Giants are running, trying to go quick. There's a flag down, so it'll slow the thing down. If it stands, it's a gain of 43. I. <laughs> Let's check the flag. It's ineligible downfield. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. We play first down. So as the scrambling was going on, Evan Neal, the right tackle, erases the question of if he was in or out in that 43-yard at a Hyatt. But let's go ahead and talk about Jalen Hyatt anyway. Here's a guy that has the two longest scrimmage plays of the year, but he only has four catches. That's a 58-yarder or 31-yarder, whatever that one would have been. But throwing on early downs, a good idea. We saw Hyatt was engaged with the defender as he was pass blocking him. Sometimes that's not called ineligible downfield. Barkley on the carry here for a gain of five to the 25. Tackle made by Jordan Phillips. Terry McCauley, can I bring you in on that? Because that's one question that you've put on our radar this year. Sure thing, Mike. If the offensive lineman drives that defensive lineman, he can drive him as far as he wants to. As long as once he disengages, he stops and either goes back or moves laterally. That wasn't a foul for an ineligible downfield. 
Second and ten. Barkley got five of the last one. Matt Breida is in now. He runs inside the 20 yard line. He'll set up 36, two and a half into the second. You know, one of the things about this defense of Sean McDermott, who's also the defensive coordinator now, not only are they good, but they're playing hard out there as well. Jordan Phillips with a great hustle play on the one prior. They're very young at linebacker. Dorian Williams, one of the young linebackers, can fly. Bernard inside, calling the plays. This is a defense that's good now, but I think it's going to get better as the season goes along. With some pieces, flag is down, and we'll stop this play for a false start on the Giants. False start, offense, number 67. Five-yard penalty, third down. It's a couple on pew here, and again, you mentioned it, Chris. Only around a week, second quarterback for the Giants. Noise in this place, hard to get back up to speed. Yeah, and he's played five snaps at left tackle in the last seven years before tonight. Yep. So it's going to give you some idea. He's just not used to that position. And the thing about tackle is you can't look in at the ball. You have to look at that target on the outside, or Von Miller goes right by you. Hall of Fame level coming off the edge. Throws incomplete. Trying to get it to Brita. It'll be three and out for the Giants. And they will kick it away for the third time. And I guarantee you, over there on the Giants sideline, they're saying, doesn't matter. We have a lead. If they don't score the rest of the game, we win. That's kind of <laughs> the way you have to look at it. Jamie Gillen went to college at Arkansas. Pine Bluff, who was born in Inverness in Scotland. Picked up the nickname the Scottish Hammer. Look out! Almost blocked. Gets it away. Nice hang time. 51 yards with a fair catch back at the 35. For Deontay Hardy. So the Bills will take over here with 11.40 left and 3-0. The game over in London last week. Jacksonville stayed from the week before. The Bills got over and they admitted they were a little bit slow after the travel tonight a little bit different story what's going on here well I think it's always tough to fly back across the pond first of all and get yourself ready to play but also to play a team that you assume you're going to be you know we've mm -hmm. seen it a couple of times already yeah. today yeah. where big underdogs end up being the ones that come out with the victory and I tell you for right now, <laughs> did you know they were looking at us? No, I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> These guys cameras everywhere. They're too much time on the run. Here comes James Cook into the secondary to midfield. Good gain of 15 on the ground for Cook. And the Giants have a, another player slow to get up. I tell you, this has been a different group inside for the Buffalo Bills here with McGovern and Torrance. They really have been much better. Officials stopped the game for a moment as Cordell Flott stayed down, and the officials want to make sure they get him checked out. So he'll come over. So the Giants now, without their starting corner, Dory Jackson, and their starting slot, Cordell Flott. Darnay Holmes will check in for the Giants. Well, and Darnay Holmes was their slot cornerback a season ago. He had almost 500 snaps in the slot, so he does have experience. But it's pretty amazing what's happening yeah. to the Giants this early in the season. We've got two rookie corners out there now as they had a good part of the preseason. Banks and Hawkins. Here's Cook again. Good inside run. Cook one more time into the secondary. And just a little bit of message sending here. Kenny Dorsey calling the plays. Two physical runs by this Bills offense. Well, you're getting a lot of looks here. And let's start off with the rookie in there at right guard and Osiris Torrance just able to pin that nose tackle inside and then get up to the second level so much improved play pretty solid all the way across this offensive line right now back to back 14 yard carries that earned a third one Cook this time 4-3 mentioned Kenny Dorsey he replaced Brian Dable, when Dable took over the Giants as the head coach, Dorsey went from quarterback's coach of the Bills to their offensive coordinator. Yeah, and when he got here, he didn't know Brian Dable at all. Said he never had any interaction with him, and he was invited to Dable's house for dinner every Sunday for the rest of the time that he was here. 
kind of builds that family effect, does Dave Ole, and he will always be greatly respected within the Buffalo Walls. After the game of three, Latavius Murray takes over. It's play action. Allen over the top. That is broken up. Hit that so often to Stephon Diggs. The Giants, Bobby O'Karake. Chris, I thought it was one of the big additions to the Giants in this offseason. He gets back to break it up. I'll tell you what, that was some play right there. It really was. Watch the way that he drops underneath this coverage. It looks like no way in the world he's getting back to the right. Dives and saves a big play right there. He's been all over the field already in this one. I can watch Josh Allen throw the ball all day. The power, the speed. This is that whole huge six foot five frame gets his body into it. Taken off here, lofting for Diggs over his head, and he was blanketed, and it will bring up fourth down. So yet another drive. The Bills showed something good. Then they got to the air, and they got stopped. We'll see if they'll try a field goal in this direction from 53. Yeah, they are working hard to get Diggs the ball, and obviously the Giants had some real plans. There was a little bit of a hug there as he made that turn. No call. A little bit of a breeze. There's always something in the wind here in Western New York. And here's Tyler Bass, officially 52 yards. Operation is clean. It's leaking to the right, and it's no good. And Bass misses for the first time. Back to the quarterback, like it's somebody jumping the fair on the subway. This time they move the pocket. Wandale Robinson completes it. Gain of eight to the receiver. And had another problem there. We showed you Izudu being taken off earlier. Joshua is out for the game with his toe injury. So, Chris, that is another offensive lineman they don't have. And the big one is right there. I mean, Andrew Thomas, if he's playing left tackle for this team, you can handle the issues on the rest of the side. But he's been out since week one. Play action second and two, and this throw is complete. The big tight end, Waller to the 30-yard line. So two nice plays. That one gains 20 with Darren Waller, and the Giants get a first down. They're on the move. Yeah, so they're coming out with Waller in line as a regular blocking tight end, which we all know he's not. And so he's going to come out and sneak all the way across. So what we've seen here on the first two snaps is instead of taking that missed field goal, try and play a little ball control, no, they go a couple of play actions, a little bootleg. They're getting Tyrod Taylor on the move. And Tyrod Taylor is giving this team a little confidence lift. Well, given the offensive struggles, fans trying to urge this Bills defense on. Same look, Taylor retreats and just gets rid of it incomplete as you saw nothing was open downfield. But, you know, Mike, you look at Tyrod Taylor, and yes, he's been around and he took the Buffalo Bills to the playoffs, and we've talked about all that, but his career record. 60 touchdowns and 26 interceptions. Mm -hmm. He's not a guy that's going to get you beat, right? right? He's going to play within himself unless it's really there. Like in that case, just throw it away and let's live to try another day. From the 30, they will run. Barkley slipping with that left foot as he was cutting. Only a yard to the 29 for Saquon. Hasn't gotten much going. 11 carries in that first game back from the ankle injury. 15 yards. And he knew what this was going to be like, right? You're playing against one of the best defenses in football. He's on a bad ankle. He has a shake up an offensive line that you have a lot of respect for him for just showing up out here tonight. Giants out of the huddle quick on third and nine. Ron Miller taking off. Taylor throws. It's complete. And it's a first down. Robinson got hit hard, but Wandale gets it inside the red zone to the 19 yard line. The Giants moving and taking time off the clock halfway through the second. First of all, love the play by Wandale Robinson on the outside. Few right here going to end up getting the block on Von Miller. But watch him just turn straight up the field. How many people do you see make that catch, dance around, end up short of the first down, but Robinson split him, picked up a big one. Ellinger, the tight end, leading the way. Barkley to the left. Hills on the other side of the line. Loss of two yards again as Buffalo gets Dorian Williams and 
Terrell Bernard in there. We should take the second to point out all the injuries that Buffalo has. Daquan Jones up front out. out. Matt Milano hurt last week. Significant injury likely for the rest of the year. And Tredavious White, their corner from two weeks ago. And a high percentage of the salary cap allotted to the defensive side of the ball, right? Yeah, 14 percent of the team's salary cap is out for most of the regular season, if not all. White and Achilles, Milano the knee and leg, and Jones a torn pec. Tyrod Taylor going to take a timeout here before the play clock runs out. 619 left the Giants up by a field goal Melissa what about Saquon Barkley who's back in the lineup tonight yes I talked to him right before kickoff and he told me that pain and cutting were his biggest concerns he has a heavier tape job on that right ankle and I said how do you feel Are you going to be on a snap count he said you know I really don't know and I won't know until I get out there remember how much of a part of the offense he was last year he was 75 percent of the season out there this was the run earlier Chris yeah, and you can tell he's having a little bit of trouble with his footing. And sometimes when you haven't been in there for a little while, instead of rounding off that cut, you try to do something you're not quite and you know, you slip across the field. And it's just not, he just needs to get some of the rhythm of the running sure. game going. I mean, those are more rounded cuts when he's really on his A game. And then you got guys in front of you who haven't been in front of you before with this makeshift offensive line. So yep. it's. But as the Bills reminded us, I don't care who it is, like guys who belong in the NFL are out there on the field. They're going to find a way to piece it together. And the Giants are play clock running down out of the timeout. Snap just in time. Flag down as Taylor keeps it alive. Scrambles. <laughs> runs to the 14 yard line. He gains five, but again, we had a flag at the line of scrimmage. And two guys in motion, perhaps, at the same time, without one being set. Yep. Second down run to the 14, so McDermott will push him back. Legal shift, offense. Not all 11 players were set before the snap. Five yard penalty, second down. It's really what happens to you when you get up and you see the play clock is running down and now you've got people over here who are both trying to get set and go in motion and you see the little step back and then the motion all at one time and that's the foul. The Giants fifth penalty of this first half and it backs them up to second and 18. Let's bring four Taylor able to get rid of an incomplete behind Waller. The tight end to the 20 yard line. Yeah, that's the first big miss by Tyrod Taylor right there. He really did have Waller open. And you just want to continue to keep these drives alive. And I think maybe he was expecting Waller to come out of that cut and just sit down in the zone. Waller broke and just the miscommunication. So this is third in a very long situation. You don't want to fumble the ball, you don't want to have a turnover here. This is where Tyrod Taylor just has to make good decisions. Third and 18, out quick, Robinson hit quick. Taron Johnson, the outstanding slot corner for the Bills, all over that 43-yard field goal attempt coming. That is some hit right there by Taron Johnson. He has been such the cornerstone of this defense for so long. This is one of those teams in the NFL that just basically plays a slot cornerback all the time, and he ran right past the block of Darren Waller. It sets up the 43 yarder for Graham Gano. He sneaks it inside that right upright. He is too thymied so far. And Josh Allen, who got off to a good early rhythm, has since been held in check. And no runs by Josh so far tonight. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, and so many times he tends to wake up this offense by taking off, but he hasn't been doing that as much this year. Damian Harris will let it go, and the Bills' offense will come out at the 25 yard line. It's interesting what you say about Allen. You know, we think of Allen, those big plays, those runs like you talk about, but Josh has talked to us about just kind of being cool, being relaxed, a little bit of different approach. When everything around him's going crazy. Yeah, business like. I, I think one of the things, and maybe justifiably so, that sometimes when he got 
too pumped up. He would try to carry the team himself, make throws back across the middle, throw interceptions. I think he just wants to stay within himself. He has confidence this team can get it going, but there are times when a quarterback running the ball can really wake up an offense. Austin Knox trying to help block Allen, running, throwing, nothing's open downfield, incomplete. And a big hit back there as well. The pressure was on. Dexter Lawrence getting in there. Holding. Offense, number 66. 10 yard penalty, first down. That's on Connor McGovern. You're going to see McGovern going against Dexter Lawrence inside, and they desperately need to get Lawrence going here. The other guys on the other side are not great pass rushers here. They're playing without Aziz Ojolari uh, tonight. And so it really is either Kay Kayvon Thibodeau or Dexter Lawrence that needs to be generating that pressure here tonight. Great news for the Giants at the corner. Dory Jackson is back in the lineup. You see him back at the 24-yard line. For New York, first and 25 as the flag for the false start is on Spencer Brown. False start, offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, first down. And you can hear the angst in the audience from the Bills Mafia. You can see it on Sean McDermott's face as well. Yeah, and Mike, you brought a great point up during the break. You know, does the information that Brian Dayball has about Josh Allen in this offense in some way help this team, and maybe so. 25. Allen in trouble here. Trying to escape. Does for the moment. Flings it downfield, and it's incomplete. And Allen took a big shot as well. And a flag comes down late. Allen was down on his knees there, and the flag was thrown by the umpire well after the ball was away. Let's see what they have. It was Okereke bringing the pressure. It's coming from different places now as we go deeper into this first half. All right, here's the call. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal hands to the face. Defense, number 28. That penalty has declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 58. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So Karen K gets called, and maybe that will spark this Bills offense. Ball comes out to the 25-yard line. Terry, I'm going to turn this one right over to you. And, and I, Chris, I'm going to tell you it's not a foul. Thank there, you. It's not I, late. There was it's nothing. It's not to the head neck area. This is a legal hit on the quarterback throwing on the run. And the foul was called from way across the field, and the officials were, that were right there did not call it. And they're going to take Allen out of the game here? Did the spotter up at the top in the press box say that Allen needs to be checked out, or did the official notice something? Josh Allen coming out of the game to get checked. And Kyle Allen is coming in. Perhaps they saw the way he hit his helmet. Allen is uh, running back quickly towards the blue tent on the Bills sideline to get examined. So Kyle Allen, his third team in three years, he was with Houston last year, comes in to play quarterback for the Bills. He's been in a few games, only kneel downs thus far this year. So for the 25, Allen gives to Latavius Murray. Kyle Allen should emphasize that it's a gain of about five to the 30-yard line. Well, now all I can do is watch the blue tent and see what happens from there. I'm sure there are several tests. People are peeking inside, wanting to know exactly what's going on with the franchise. See, as Allen came off, he ran after he took that helmet off to go get checked. I don't know what triggered it. But sent off right away. So second and five, the fifth-year man out of Houston, Kyle Allen, under center. And he's going to give to James Cook. The first down right at the 35-yard line. Going to mark him short, and it will bring up third down. 19 career starts for Kyle Allen. Let's go back as the fans cheer when Josh Allen comes out of the blue tent and runs onto the field. And Kyle Allen runs off just as quickly. <laughs> Apparently the fans were doing exactly what I was doing. 
just watching the blue tent over there. No offense, Kyle, but uh, good to have you back. So third and inches in time here on the play clock. Damian Harris is in at running back for the Bills. Big hit on Harris, but past the 35-yard line, it looks to be. They come right down the line, and it's marked the first down. It was Okereke again, and Harris is the one who is shaken up. It's right after Josh Allen gets checked out. Damian Harris takes the shot from Okereke on that third and short. And the Bills running back is down and being looked at. The athletic training staff for Buffalo is out there. The concern for Damian Harris as we step out. Well, as is uh, always said in these cases, the worst scene you can imagine as an ambulance has come on the field to look at Damian Harris, the fifth year running back out of Alabama who had played with the Patriots for four years and the uh, athletic training staff for Buffalo is right out there to provide the uh, immediate attention and we know how heroic and great they were in the situation back on January 2nd with DeMar Hamlin and uh, there you see the hit that happened with Okereke and they uh, pretty quickly brought out the the backboard to look at him and assess Harris and to get him uh, into the ambulance as quickly as possible. And there are protocols and procedures that the athletic training staff goes through when you have injuries like this. And as many have learned over the last year after what happened in Cincinnati last year with DeMar Hamlin, who is inactive uh, for the game tonight, you see his emotions as he watches just looks down there on the sideline and you can imagine what he and what all these Bills players who have gone through that terrible situation last year are thinking right now as their teammate Harris is being looked at. There's always a medical meeting before the game. And I actually walked by in the tunnel as all the medical personnel that are here on site were meeting to be coordinated for exactly a situation like this and to get the best possible care to Damian Harris as soon as possible. Athletic training staff doctors out there looking at Harris, being very careful with any of their movements. So as they continue to do that, we'll step out. The good news is while we were in break, we did get a thumbs up from Damian Harris as uh, the stretcher was being loaded onto the ambulance. Here that was while we were in break a minute ago. Always that good sign as the further medical diagnosis will go on. The hospital, the level one trauma center nearby is the Erie County Medical Center. It's about 18 miles from the stadium. And they will go there where there are doctors in each specialty who are waiting uh, and will give the best possible care to Harris. You come to an NFL game and these players, you've got all this hitting and all the physicality and all the injuries. There is a staff of about 30 between the teams and the stadium on a regular basis. For situations like that, and bless those professionals for their incredible work in situations like this. When we hear something, we'll let you know. First down, Josh Allen's pass complete. Stephon Diggs. Gain of 20 to the 45. And Buffalo on the move here inside of three till halftime. Yeah, take a deep breath, right, and settle back into a football game. We certainly want to wish Damian the absolute best. and. But I tell you, for Josh Allen, he would love to get something going with this offense here before the half because they really have not put anything together so far. 17 throws by Allen, 12 targeted to Diggs. From the 46, his pass deflected in the air, intercepted by Michael McFadden. Bobby Okereke continues to be a huge factor in this game. Forced to fumble in the first quarter, now a deflection. And this linebacker combo has combined for the second time tonight. I mean, these are really good looking throws. And as he drops into coverage, you're going to see McFadden end up with the interception. But Okereke with another diving tip pass right to his partner. And 
the New York Giants, I knew they were going to come out here fired up and ready to play. But honestly, I don't think I could have imagined this oh. defense coming out and dominating this first half the way that they have. Rick Martindale's crew doing an incredible job thus far, keeping Buffalo scoreless. The Giants get the ball to start the second half. And they'd love to keep it till halftime no matter what. Barkley trying to jump over the pressure. Gains about a yard, and that should take us down towards the two-minute warning. Bobby Okereke and Micah McFadden. The Giants linebacking core needed a major upgrade from going into last season to going into this season. Those guys have provided it. Okereke coming in in the offseason. McFadden, as he has continued to improve. We'll see Tyreek and the Dolphins against Philadelphia. A pair of 5-1 and one teams next Sunday night. AFC East against NFCs then and here. Taylor's throw on second down is complete. Jalen Hyatt will take it a couple shy of the first down. Right around the 49-yard line with about 50 to go. Yeah, that's a nice job by this Giants offense right there to recognize the single high safety look, which the Bills don't do a lot of, and take advantage of that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now give them a chance here to convert on third down and control the ball until the end of the half. Giants go empty here on third and three. And Taylor's got a moment to fire towards Slayton. Got it at the 22-yard line. 30 on the game to Darius Slayton. Same thing right there. They go to the single high safety, come up and help with the run game, which means one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against Christian Benford. And look at this, the New York Giants who have struggled to hit big plays all season long. They've got the speed at the receiver position, and in this game, they're dialing up the right magic moments. Their offense has not scored a first-half touchdown all year. One by the defense last week. Barkley inside right. Saquon Barkley keeps chopping the feet to the 13-yard line with a minute 11 to go. And, and, Mike, you have to make this point that just Saquon being in the game has presented enough of a threat, even though they haven't run the ball well all night long, to force them into that single safety, the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the cornerbacks outside, and give guys like Slayton a chance to get down the field. Giants in no hurry with the two timeouts. They want to give the Bills the ball back. Barkley, patient, running right close to the first down marker. Been pulled down by Dorian Williams. Mark is just shy. We have third down with 35 seconds left. See how aggressive Dable is with timeouts here. And he's going to take it. Take it with 28, 27 here on the clock. It lasts for a second or so back there before third and short with one timeout remaining. So we, we build this up as part Brian Dable comes back home. We'll get into it a little bit later on how close his high school, where he grew up was. And I was thinking during the week, like, you feel bad for the guy, right? You're coming back, head coach, Giants, place where you grew up, place where you coach, and you've got nobody on the offensive line. Look what they're doing. Well, that's what the coaches told me this week. It's like, that's what we get paid to do. When there are issues on our football team, we get paid to fix them. Hmm. So what have they done? They haven't thrown a drop back pass almost the entire game. It's been bootlegs, first down, play action, and just enough of Saquon Barkley to set up a couple of big plays. But most of all, what they've done on the defensive yeah. side of the ball has been amazing so far. Wink Martindale, his crew have just been spectacular. The rookie Eric Gray joins Barkley in the backfield on third and one. Inside, Gray gets it, gets the first down to the 10. Giants will take the last time out, I believe, here. Yes, they do. With 23 seconds remaining, up 6-0. All right, let's go to Melissa. Mike, we have gotten word from the Bills on running back Damian Harris, who was taken off the field in the ambulance. It is a neck injury. He does have movement in his arms and his legs, and he is being driven right now to the hospital for further testing. It's the best possible possible report in a short period of time and the one you always hope to hear. Thank you for sharing that, Melissa. Thanks to the Bills for passing that along. And we continue to keep Harris in our prayers and thoughts as we go through. All right, Chris, the Giants are now out of timeouts with 24 seconds left. Down here, right around the 10-yard line. 
Well, first and foremost, you have to at least get a field goal attempt out of this, right? And so far, what we've seen out of Tyrod Taylor would make me trust him mm -hmm. in this moment to not make the big mistake. 34-year-old quarterback, first and goal. Taylor, Von Miller coming, he throws incomplete, just gets rid of it with Barkley out of the pattern. Covered by the linebacker, Dorian Williams. He's a rookie out of Tulane. Yeah, that rookie out of Tulane, Dorian Williams, is going to be some player. You can see his speed just explode out there. Here's Von Miller on the outside working against Evan Neal. And it's a good thing that Tyrod Taylor drifted left. Out of the 123 and a half sacks, bearing down on him, second and goal. No timeouts to the Giants. Taylor lofting back in the end zone with a flag down, incomplete for Slayton. But with 14 seconds left, it'll bring it down to the one. They are going after Kyir Elam in the back of the end zone. As he oh. broke to the pass interference, defense number 24. The foul occurred in the end zone by rule. The ball be spotted at the one yard line. Automatic first down. That was a great shot right there from our camera crew. You could see the ball just being released as that final hole was taking place, and so it did go on the one instead of being a five yard penalty. Yeah, it would have been a defensive hold. That would have been half the distance to the goal. So now the Giants the release at the one yard line. First and goal. No timeouts. 14 seconds left. It is tough to get a second playoff. Taylor just. They're going to hand it off. It's Barkley. He's trying to run. He's not going to get there. Can they get it down? I don't think so. They are not going to do it. Five seconds and four. Giants trying to get on the ball. They can't. And that's a terrible, terrible clock management into the half.